All right, what's going on guys? T Torres back here for another video. All right, I got a serious question to ask you guys. I am on the fence on getting a 2022 uh, ABS monkey and um, which color do you guys prefer? I know which one I would like in my head, but uh, yellow or black? Go check those out and then comment down below and tell me which one uh, you guys would rather see on the channel. I'd like to have a yellow one to match the yellow Grom, but the black looks good. The, the, I, I ain't gonna lie, both of them, both of them look extremely good. So let me know which one uh, you guys would like to see. So in today's video, we are going to be installing the man in the box shock. As you can see here, it comes with all the hardware. And then uh, what I will say is that this is for the stock uh, ride height and it is adjustable. Um, the shock's adjustable preload. So I think this is gonna be a super simple install. Got the bike already on the center kickstand, so the rear tire's already up. Probably gonna remove bolt here, bolt here, drop that. We'll put this plate in place of that, and then uh, get the new um, get the new shock up. If you're interested in this same um, setup for your Navi, I have a link down in the description to the Man in the Box uh, a website to order. I think these are, out of, I think they're you know out of stock at the moment. So do not forget, I will be at the Barber Small Bore event. June 3rd to the 5th. Can't wait to see you guys there. Let's get into uh, today's install. All right, first things first, let's get this uh, bottom bolt off and that is going to be a 12 millimeter. Okay, of course that was gonna drop. We knew that. All right, and then let's get the top one. Okay, top bolt's a little bit bigger. It is a 14 millimeter. It's not me farting, it's the, <laughs> the bubble wrap. All right, we just dropped the Navi shock in less than 30 seconds. Super simple. All right, there you have it. There is the factory Navi, Navi shock. All right, let me get the, uh, let me get everything uh, unwrapped and uh, We'll go ahead and start by installing this plate for the shock mount. Just a little admin note, if you still have the factory Navi airbox, you are going to have to trim a little piece of the, the airbox off, like a quarter of it. If you go to the Man in the Box website, they'll show you that. So next thing that we're going to do, we're going to remove this 10 millimeter right here. Okay, super simple. And then we have the replacement one here. So here is the actual shock mount itself with the hardware. So we're gonna go ahead and place, I'm gonna get roughly where it should sit. And that's gonna sit like that. Super simple process. And then I'm gonna go get some Allen keys. We're gonna go ahead and um, not fully tighten this one down because I, I wanna make sure this is set in the right spot in the shock. So. Let me figure out what size Allen key this is and then I'll catch up with you guys in just a second. All right, so for the bottom uh, Allen key nut or bolt, I should say, it's a five millimeter. You're gonna need three different ones. This one's a eight. Let me make sure I told you that right. This, uh, no, this one the, one, the one that I'm using right now is a five and then the other one I don't know, I think it's a five and a half is what I have. Leave that one a little bit loose down there so you can finagle uh, this to uh, whichever way you want. I think I actually got it too tight, so let's loosen that bad boy back up. So we can line, line this hole up right. Okay, get that started. Okay, let me get that one started and uh, we'll get back to the top one to get the shock on this bad boy. All right, let's go ahead and get this one started here. Okay, lay that down just like that. I'm going to get this. I need to take this rear fender off big time. All right, so we're going to get that one started and then we're going to have to lift this tire up. It shouldn't be a problem. Let me just make sure. Oh, yeah, 
super simple. What did I do with the other bolt? Oh, we're gonna reuse the actor clip. One handed. Nice. All right. So there you have it. There's the first look. Uh, remember, this is a five. I believe that's a that's a big one. Oh yeah, five. No, five, six, and then uh, eight millimeter on this one. Had to get back there and hold that that on the back. And then uh, of course the top was a. Uh, I said, was that a 12 or a 14? I don't remember. It was a 14. So let me get everything buttoned up. We'll kick the bike off the stand and then give the bike a ride and see how it feels over the factory squishy uh, spring. All right, we got a 17 ratcheting wrench on the back of this one. This really makes me wish I would have already removed this fender. Go back, double check everything. That one's good and tight. Oh, wrong one. That one's good and tight. That one's good and tight. All right, so there you have it. <laughs> I literally changed this, I'd say less than 10 minutes, 10 minutes tops. Never done this before, you could do the same, super easy. So let me get the bike off the stand. Well, matter of fact, let's go ahead and warm this thing up. Just got over 100 miles on this bad boy. Let this thing get warmed up. God, I cannot wait for them to come out with an exhaust for this thing. This thing is too quiet. Way too quiet. And then just another note, I did order the, uh, the variator for this, so we will be doing an install video on that. So, We'll let the bike warm up and we're gonna take it down the road and see how it feels. All right, one thing that I forgot to add was there's a washer that goes on the top of here. So as you can see, I put it back. It helps if you take everything out of the package. So there's no washer there. So just a little admin note, don't forget to put that washer. All right, just got done riding the bike for the first time. Bike rode great as expected. I am gonna mess with the preload just a little bit. Uh, I do want it to be just a little bit stiffer, but other than that, it was super, super simple install. Like I said, it took maybe 10 minutes tops. And if you have a factory airbox, remember you are gonna have to shave some stuff off. But if I was you, I'd get rid of that factory airbox and get the uh, get the man of the, uh, man of the box intake uh, for sure. So I'm gonna go for a ride on the bike for a little bit and um, yeah. Like I mentioned, I do have a variator coming for the bike. Um, still waiting on a good quality exhaust. The hot lap seems like it's like months out from being in here, so not gonna go with the hot lap. Um, just gonna keep waiting. I may even get like a custom one made uh, from a little fabrication shop until uh, Yosh makes one. I really wanna get Yosh. I will forever run Yosh on all my bikes, no matter what. And then, um, yeah, I gotta wire everything back so the headlight doesn't flicker whenever I do the LED headlight. I, I wish somebody could come out with a plug and play one of those. And I want to get the. Um, I seen some people on the forums. They have a um, tinted uh, windshield windscreen. I think that'd be super cool. I'd like to get some different side markers once I wire everything up. Um, definitely do the rear rear fender delete too as well. There's a lot of things coming. I'd like to get a graphics kit for this thing before we get to the small bore, as well as uh, for the Grom, but. That's going to do it for today's video. Uh, hopefully the variator will be in within uh, this week, this coming week. Um, but thank you all so much for watching. If you're stopping to the channel for the first time, please hit that subscribe button. Turn on your post notifications. Leave this video a big thumbs up. Even if you didn't like today's video, give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.